Ah, you've arrived at last. Come forward. We have much to discuss. Princes are not supposed to meddle in our affairs. My companion thought he had dealt with that threat. But that is not your... You've arrived. I am Devaith Fear, Wizard Lord of Telfear. I trust no further introduction is necessary. I seek a Daedric artifact. It lies hidden in a brass city filled with danger, curiosity, and contradiction. You will accompany me, if you wish. A voyage that only a few have ever undertaken. We will travel to Sotha Seal's peculiar experiment, the Clockwork City. I have inquiries to make. You will assist me. I do. The Tribunes are not so clever that they could hide such a place from me for long. The city is quite close, and also very far away. Just the first of Sotha Seal's many paradoxes. If you choose to join me, be prepared for many more. You saved the life of a living god. Yes, I know all about your service to Vivek and your conflict with Clavicus Vile. Foiling the plans of a Daedric prince is no mean feat. I can think of no better companion for my journey to the Clockwork City. Of course you will. Naturally, you have questions. Alas, they will have to wait. Servants of the Tribunal do not look kindly on blasphemous journeys like this one. Meet me at the waterfall north of the city. Discuss the details there. Prepare if you must, but make it quick. Time is not on our side. to the three can you times have been hard but the three will see me through can you help Behind the waterfall! My companion arrives at last. Now then, our journey begins. watchful. 
So the seal always did admire dwarven industry, albeit quietly. Perhaps that's why he built his city here. This lift will take us to the nethermost depths of the ruin, and to our destination. Come along. On you go. The entrance lies just ahead. see, just across the ravine, that's our door. Audacious, but foolhardy. When I find them, I... Wait. I feel... cold. Back, creature! My shadow! My power! Don't let it escape! Ready your weapons! I will assist you as best I can! Find a way to deactivate these traps. Perhaps I failed to impress the gravity of our situation upon you. If my shadow gets away, we may never escape this place. So if you have something to say, say it quickly. Yes. And perhaps something more. In removing my shadow, our attacker removed some vital part of my animus. My soul, in the common parlance. Without it, my power is severely diminished. Needless to say, this, this will not do. This may surprise you, but I've never had my shadow ripped from my body. Even so, I will devise a solution. Don't trouble yourself with the finer details, just be prepared to fight. Much will depend on your ability. Do not fail me. 
Not yet. We should have translocated directly to the Brass Fortress, Seal's chief municipality here in the Clockwork City. But somehow we ended up here, vexing. Yeah, one step at a time, if you please. We need only to find a landmark or map or something. Once I determine where we are, it won't take long to find an exit. Just leave that to me. You focus on these traps. Spinning knives is not an epitaph worthy of defeat. Now, onward. Eager to see what new wind-up absurdities await us. Spellcraft is all I can muster, but I will aid you as best I can. Lead on.
Goliath can't be it to hear. The Vakrokad sent Morad. Finally. You never know how much you miss a thing until it tries to kill you. Four ridiculous machines? I've had enough of this. Come. We still have a long way to go. How can I help? Behold, the clockwork city. Finally. Sothasil's brass fortress waits at the end of this road. We should go there at once. Keen to find out who sent us on that delightful jaunt through the new Martis. warned you never to come back. And you, one of Fear's lackeys, I take it. Lushana Pullo. Hospitable as ever? Go talk to her. I'll not waste my time speaking with a petulant toy soldier. Hold there, friend of Fear. I am Proctor Luciana Pullo of the Clockwork Apostles. I don't know how you and this egomaniac breached Lord Seth's Celestia drone, but I won't have non-citizens stirring up mischief in the Brass Fortress. Only just arrived and already trying to grease the gears? New arrivals must secure an endorsement from a citizen in good standing. I'm prepared to overlook your atrocious choice in companions if you can find a sponsor. Until then, you are tarnished. That's for you to find out. Not many citizens will risk their reputation on a green-heeled stranger, and you'll find no comfort from me. Maybe you should confer with the other tarnished over there. In the meantime, obey the law. I'll be watching.
Tread carefully, Fear. I'll be watching. Shana clearly hasn't lost her charming demeanor. Predictable. Ah, yes. Their bizarre sponsorship custom. I forgot about that little wrinkle. As a friend and peer of Sotha Seal, I come and go as I please. I suppose it would be best for you to wait out here. If I need you again, I will find you. I'm not a citizen. And even if I were, I'd not waste time wading through their opaque bureaucracy. You've proven yourself to be more than capable. I have no doubt you'll figure something out. Gain your sponsorship. We will speak again soon. I appreciate your assistance in the pneumatic forge, but for now, our paths must diverge. The artifact we seek will not remain in one place for long. I can ill afford a delay. Navigate this absurd ritual quickly. I will find one of Sotha Seal's greater lackeys, chief proctor of the Clockwork Apostles. You might have noticed some mild cosmetic flaws. Honestly, I think she's more automaton than flesh and blood. She certainly acts the part. Seal takes all kinds. Imperials, Bretons, even Argonians. Luciana may be one of his oldest servants. She served Emperor Riemann Cyrodiil as a battle mage in her younger years, made quite a name for herself during the Akaviri invasion. According to the legend, she was caught in a torrent of arcane energy during a battle with a rival mage. It mangled her body and sent her hurtling through the veil. She eventually crashed here. Seal found her shortly thereafter and mended her wounds. Indeed. At first, I thought she served him out of some cheap obligation. Uh, reciprocity for his kindness. But apparently, she really believes in this place. I heard they had a bit of a falling out. She still serves him, though, in her dog-like fashion. People like her rarely are. You see, I present a destabilizing influence. I reject all illusions of authority and thus reject their entire way of life. Hierarchy, ritual, reverence, it's all a sham. I respect power, not absurd social constructs. Yes, a monastic order of sorts. They serve Sotha Seal through magical inquiry. Apostles fancy themselves iconoclasts who push the boundaries of magical praxis. There's a seed of truth there, I suppose, but they're still obnoxious. <laughs> you mean, are they all half-metal monstrosities? <laughs> more or less. Some modify themselves more than others. It's a form of reverence. They want to be more like Sotha Seal. You see, Seal has some peculiar... Well, I'll let you see for yourself. Seal has many names. Sotha Seal, Set, Sea... The clockwork god, on and on. Tiresome, if you ask me. The clockwork apostles mostly refer to him as Set, his verse and sermon name. I call him Seal, because I'm not a doe-eyed idiot. Another newcomer, eh? Come, let's talk. Well, if it isn't my second favorite assistant. Well, if it isn't my second favorite assistant, what a fortuitous turn of events. I shouldn't be surprised. You have a knack for appearing when I need you most. I take it you haven't found a sponsor yet. Maybe we can help each other. 
Initially, I thought we could rely on my ample charms to win us a sponsor. Unfortunately, the people here tend to value craft over the pleasure of my company. Providing some gift or service seems to be the only way to earn a sponsorship. Yes, a clockwork apostle named Varuni Arvel. Apparently, she's a member of the Congress of Calibration, the governing body here in the city. My associates, Kirith and Raynor, are already working on a plan to earn her trust. Will you help us? This promises to be a fruitful collaboration. I tasked Kirith and Raynor with acquiring gifts for Varuni, but they tend to wander. Kirith's just there by the cliff. You should speak with her. In the meantime, I'll conduct more research. Questions? So that pompous high elf got his hooks in you too, huh? I told my brother Raynor we should go it alone, but any house in an ash storm, right? Speaking of Raynor, he might need your help. Depends on your definition of trouble, I guess. He's down in the ravine, playing with the firepot spiders for some reason. He wouldn't tell me more. Unfortunately, those spiders have a tendency to, you know, explode. Like I said, he didn't want to discuss it. Probably whipped up an automata disrupting spoon twirler or something. He gets like this sometimes. Just check in on him, all right? He's clumsy and those apostles' mechanical limbs look expensive. Thanks for the help. Rain or smart, but you can't smart a spider to death, you know? Sergeant Baldan, this one has the gold you requested. Will you still sponsor me? I gave you my word, didn't I? Come, cat. We can discuss the specifics in my office. A thousand blessings, Walker. Lankin has much to offer the Brass Fortress. Yes, I'm sure you do. Sergeant Baldan, this one has the gold you requested. Will you still sponsor me? I gave you my word, didn't I? Come, cat. We can discuss this. Riding with you is quite the journey. Ah, greetings. Please don't mind me. Actually, do mind me. I'm conducting an experiment on these firepot spiders, and so far the results have proven... explosive. You should probably give this place a wide berth for the time being. Kirith? So you've joined our band of outsiders. Welcome. Now look. I may lack Kirith's natural talent with a blade, but I can accomplish this on my own. Varuni's sure to sponsor us once I deliver this. Oh, who am I kidding? I do need your help. These firepot spiders contain a highly unstable oil-like fluid. The dangers inherent to acquiring it make it very valuable indeed. I discovered a way to prevent the spiders from detonating. But even diffused, they're more than capable of killing me. So you'll do it? Yes, of course! If you attract the spider's attention, I can use this tonal dampener to disarm their ignition coils. Just a simple matter of inverting their threat assessment array and... Sorry. I can get carried away sometimes. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's the last of it. Excellent. Brilliant. We really made short work of those spiders, didn't we? Here, you can carry the oil. Take the oil to Varun. Miramo said she has an office in the Clockwork Basilica. Hopefully this will be enough to earn a sponsorship. If you don't mind, I'll accompany you to the gate. Can't be too careful out here. Again, thank you. Good luck in the Basilica. What do you suppose they do for fun around here? Don't even hold a discussion. Set didn't teach us to discard knowledge. Even so, the sea. Tell me this instant if there's truth to these rumors. I have nothing to say on the matter, Auxiliary. You will tell me if this portal exists. This must be my How dare you, Kermit? Your mother so wanted a better future for I you. you because a fact totem with delusions of grandeur told her fortune. Do you really believe that? She believed it. Why can't you see? See what? That following the predictions of a deluded machine gun. My steeds are. And just as I promised, my assistant arrives. You brought a gift for our sponsor, right?
Greeting, Auxiliary. Is your friend correct? Did you bring an offering? Fire, Patuo. Tremendous. And you managed to keep all ten fingers. I'm impressed. Thank you. Now, to the matter of your citizenship, you're clearly a capable warrior. But in the Clockwork City, mental precision is of paramount importance. A number of outsiders have gone missing in recent weeks. I fear someone might be abducting them, or worse. But I have no proof. I spoke to your friend Naramo, and he insists you can gather the evidence I need. Succeed? and I'll sponsor you all. Try to keep this inquiry quiet, all right? In the Clockwork City, even a small creak in the gears can draw curious eyes. So, ready to do... So, ready to do a bit of sleuthing? I am confident that we can find this elusive evidence, but it will require some skullduggery, breaking and entering, to be specific. Ready for the details? Varuni suspects that someone destroyed city records, but if my study of Dwemer ruins has taught me anything, it's that nothing is ever truly destroyed. You just need to look in the right place. Here, that place is the Depository Documatus. Sneaking into the depository is impossible for us, but Sothasil's clockwork automata enter and exit the structure constantly. I discovered a way to control one such automata, a device known as a skivaton. I am sure you're duly impressed. No, you are. I will provide technical assistance and keep an eye out for prying eyes, both mechanical and organic. Head to the depository. I'll meet you there, after I've wrapped up matters with our new benefactor. If you have questions, you should ask them now. Once we begin our investigation, we'll have little time to dawdle. As I said before, those tarnished redundants down in the slums are no concern of yours. I've instructed the constabulary to keep a strict eye on. Yes, that constable Baldon's done an admirable job. Even so, tarnished and exothromals enter the Basilica far too often. May Lord Seth bless your labors. wanted a better future for you. Because a back totem with delusions of grandeur told her fortune. Do you really believe that? She believed it. Why can't you see? Excellent. We have a strong signal. Now, to find Faruni's evidence. Wait. Yes. Go straight, then left. The central depository must be on a different floor. I'm seeing a lot of interference. Proceed carefully. We can't risk damaging the Skiverton's data collector.
expertly done. That grate should lead to the central depository and our evidence. This depository should contain security documents and recordings. Search everywhere. When you find something, use a skeleton to make a remote copy. Assistant, direct the Skeveton to the exit, then meet me there to examine the evidence. How dare you, Kermit? Your mother wanted a better future for you. Because of that totem with delusions of grandeur to right. her fortune. Alright, let me see what you found. Yes. I believe these recordings correspond to the dates of the disappearances. There's something more. Look here. The last person to access the records was a BAL-167. <sighs> Circumstantial at best. We might already have a lead. I shared Varuni's concerns with Kirath shortly after you left the Basilica, and she insisted on looking into the matter herself. She cited Constable Baldon as a person of interest. His office should be southwest of here. There you are. Done playing with Naramo's wind-up toys? I think I'm onto something. I did a little asking around. Word is, Constable Baldan will sponsor anyone as long as they can pay. Where they go after he takes their gold, that's anybody's guess. Luckily, we're here to sort it out. Here, take this memory stone. I surveyed the building. Someone left the door to Baldan's storage loft unlocked. It should provide a great view of his office. Climb up there and wait. When I offer a bribe, you record the conversation on that memory stone. Then we've got him. Baldan, I've got your gold. Will you sponsor me for citizenship? Oh, I'll take your offering. But sponsorship? That's for the living, you tarnished scum. 
the living what? Do it. Well, what are you idling for? Gather up the gold and dump her with the others. We don't want anyone finding our latest visitor. There you are. Naramo said you'd be around here somewhere. Have you seen Kirith? Is she with you? He what? How could she? We have to rescue her. You don't have any idea where they took her, do you? Yes, of course. I'll get help. Maybe I could even put together some kind of tonal locator. But not enough time. What would Kirith do? She would investigate. Yes. Talk to the people in Slagtown. They know practically everything about this place. I'll get the others. You hurry off to Slagtown. dare you, Kamit. Your mother wanted a better future for you. Because a back totem with delusions of grandeur ah, over force. Oil those ankles and keep walking, Green Heel. This one has nothing to say to you. You outsiders are all the same. Cutting into the queues, poaching our salvage, sneering and putting on airs. You're no better than us. And so you prove my point. Always trouble, always violence, and poor Saiba is caught in the middle. This on you! Baldan probably threw your friend into the fundament. A maze beneath the city. If you go after her, neither of you will come out again. Can bang the dents for my armor while we're in town.
was of some assistance. Threw you in here too, did they? I knew I couldn't be the only one Constable Baldan got the drop on. You're right, we should. And I could, but not yet. I met another one of Baldan's victims, a Khajiit named Lankin. He's been scraping it out down here, but he's no warrior. I told him I'd get him out. Unfortunately, we got separated. That's the spirit. I managed to yank this sword out of a corpse nearby. It's not much, but you don't need a sharp edge to deal with these factotums. Just a heavy swing and a lot of patience. You ready? Let's get moving. Is that? No, thank goodness. The body's far too old. Let's keep looking. I hope I was of some assistance. Decent hiding place, but no lanking. We should keep looking.
Another empty camp. Damn. He must be here somewhere. Be proud of that. one. Is that a pot on the stove? Someone was cooking. And recently. We must be close. We're getting you out of here. Friend Kirith, bright moons above. Please, let's leave this dungy place. suppose you found anything of interest down there? Enough. I'm glad to see you weren't lying, Rain Morganus. That bastard, Baldan, threw me into the fundament. <sighs> Ridiculous. I've never seen this woman in my life. Liar! You tossed this one in as well! 
This Rainer Vanos made some very bold claims. If you have evidence of Constable Baldon's crimes, I suggest you produce it. Huh. You're more resourceful than you look. Little wonder Devaith chose you as his companion. Set knows he needs the help. I'll hold Baldon under guard until I've had an opportunity to review the evidence. As for you, you're free to go. Luciana, I'd like to ask the constable a few questions when we return to the Basilica. Don't trouble yourself, Aruni. You know how persuasive I can be. I do. That's what worries me. Do your worst, you tin-legged hag. Set help you if she does, constable. That fool has no idea what he's in for. Live uncomfortably and learn, I suppose. Oh, most certainly. Baldan can't have accomplished all this by himself. Erasing records? Accessing derelict sections of the Fundament? These aren't the acts of a simple myrrh. Someone helped him. Now it's just a matter of finding out who. I do, one way or another. For now, let's celebrate your achievement. You showed initiative, creativity, bravery, all qualities befitting a servant of Set. You shall have my sponsorship. Of course, each of them played a role in your success, and each of them will share the rewards. Go speak to the Clockwork Registrar in the Chancel of Records. It will add your name to the Codices, and you'll be one of us. Again, you have my thanks. You'll regret this! Mark me, Proctor! You will regret this! I doubt that. Get this tarnished piece of scrap out of my sight. Enjoy prison, you scheming brat. Ah! It seems I arrived just in time. word, I wind the gears. Please state your business or depart. Welcome, potential resident. Please speak your birth name, followed by the name of your sponsor. Dreaming. Torch bugs. Overturned jar. Sponsorship confirmed and archived. The light of knowledge, so the seal, welcomes you to the brass fortress. Go forth and create. Well, I'd say that all worked out splendidly. As one journey ends, another begins. 
I imagine there's much more to discover here in Sothasil's clockwork city. I can finally begin my exploration in earnest. Now that we've earned our citizenship, I can apply for excavation permits, antiquity transportation licenses. Oh dear. Come to think of it, I might not be able to begin for quite some time. They proved useful. Raynor's theories need some work, and Kira's refusal to listen to reason caused me no small measure of anxiety. But on the whole, satisfactory. Provided that they follow my lead, I might call on them again in the future. I value your service and partnership, Assistant. Please take this as a token of my appreciation. If I understand the bureaucracy correctly, I may be here in the Brass Fortress for a while. Feel free to seek me out, should you require my aid. There you are. Good. We have much to discuss. Do they fear? Here? It is a true pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes, I imagine it is now, and I'll be on your way. Yes. Well, uh, be seeing you, Assistant. Good day, Lord Fear. Come, we need to talk. So you're a citizen now. Well done. I heard something about a constable tossing people down sewer drains. Even in this shrine to knowledge, drooling idiots bumble their way to power. <laughs> Ludicrous. Moving on, I require your services once more. It's Sotha Seal. Shortly after you and I parted company, I sought him out to discuss our Daedric artifact. I fear something is askew. His habits, his diction, the, the timbre of his voice, they've all changed, albeit subtly. Worse. Initially, I dismissed it as boredom, fatigue, or even the first signs of senility. But now, after observing him at length, I can say with certainty, this is not the Sotha Seal I know. There's Daedric mischief here, and we will root it out. We will leverage your hard-earned citizenship to make inquiries. First, I will make it known that in light of your recent exploits, I offered to take you on as my aid, an offer you eagerly accepted. As the most powerful mage in the Brast Fortress, I find it difficult to have proper conversations with common folk. They grow silent at my approach, then whisper as I leave. An appropriate, but sadly uninformative, display of deference. Indeed. It's commonly understood that servants grumble about their masters, loudly, to those they consider equals. Ask them about Sotha Seal's recent behavior. I'm confident we'll find something of value tucked away in their churlish complaints. You have questions, of course. Ask what you must. The forces at work here are cunning indeed, 
You should be prepared for anything. He is inscrutable, but he's also unflinching. Seal always moves deliberately, quietly, and one step at a time, like clockwork. I have never once seen him divert from his course, until now. In the short time we've been here, he has twice adjusted city patrol routes and delivered three revisions to the fortress charter. Trust me when I say this is unprecedented. So the seal never meddles like this. That's for you to discover. Don't bother speaking with members of the Congress. Varuni's faith in Sotha Seal is unbreakable. Chancellor Gascon resents any threat to the status quo. And Luciana, well, well let's just say she's been less than helpful. Luciana resents my presence, but she's no fool. I go where I please, when I please. An open confrontation between us would likely leave hundreds dead. So do not trouble yourself. She will not stand in the way of our investigation. Well, you've met Varuni. She's pleasant without being vapid or boring. Then again, her doe-eyed faith in Sotha Seal turns my stomach. I find religious attachments repulsive. My thoughts on Luciana are well known. As for Gascon, Gascon serves as Chancellor. He commands respect, but suffers from the peculiar character flaw of demanding praise at all times. Adulation. A sad fixation indeed. He holds great power, but it's his petty obsessions that make him dangerous. Be wary. valuable allies, that is, when they're not fighting among themselves. Your lord fears newest steward, huh? Could we talk later? If I don't finish this lamp inventory, Gascon will feed me to the fabricants. Yeah, Gascon must know how much I love doing paperwork. A few days ago, Sotha Seal ordered us to rip out all the lamps in here and replace them with less efficient ones. What kind of sense does that make? Who wants weaker lamps? A bunch of factotums loaded them onto a dolly and dumped them somewhere in the mechanical fundament. Hey, I know that look. If you're looking to poach a free lamp, don't bother. Gascon made us slag them all. And that's not even the worst part. Half the old switches don't work with the new lamp, so we've had to manufacture new switches, and half the time the switches get installed backwards, which means we have to do it all over again. Even the factotums don't know what they're doing. And don't even get me started on the lamp assembly. Sotha Seal could have turned the fabricators to make the new lamps with a flick of his finger, but he demanded that we do it instead. Do you have any idea how complex the fabricators are? So you're the one Devaith tapped to be his aide in the Brass Fortress. Sorry to hear that. Provost Varuni's ancestors hail from House Telvani, just like Lord Fear. But honestly, they couldn't be more different. Not as bad as you might expect. She's young, youth comes with impatience, but I've never felt unfairly judged, and she's generous with her praise. Honestly, if I had the choice between serving Varuni or Sotha Seal, I'd take Varuni every time.
Now more than ever. I don't pretend to understand his motives, but he's never been so demanding. One example? He insists that we turn all the lights down before he enters a room. Do you have any idea how difficult that is? It's maddening! Huh. Flipping switches. That's rich. Each lamp has its own switch, and some lamps have multiple switches. And if that isn't bad enough, some switches control multiple lamps. He's a god, I know, but it shouldn't take a genius to turn on the lights. Don't even get me started. Varuni might demand some obscure tome in the middle of the night or chide someone for leaving oil on the floor, but that's the worst of it. Sotha Seal exiled an auxiliary last week because she forgot to switch off a lamp. Right, right, don't let me keep you. I can't imagine how demanding Devaith Thea must be. Better you than me, that's for sure. Keep your nose to the cogs and you'll be fine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to flip two dozen switches again. So you're Devathir's new auxiliary, eh? Tough luck, friend. I've heard he's an insufferable bastard, but at least he's not so the seal. Better to be turned into a gua than to serve the clockwork god. Not anymore. In the old days, sure, he was easy to please because he was never around. These days, he changes his mind about something every night. Constant meetings, new dictums daily, adjustments to factotum patrols. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Trust me, this is unprecedented. I'm afraid something's wrong with his enhancements. Like he's having trouble regulating. He's a different person, I swear. Don't tell anyone I said this, especially Gascon. Blasphemy doesn't go over well nowadays. Yes, speaking ill of a god never turns out well. In the old days, he'd take it in stride. Commit your small blasphemies, he'd say. The fire of doubt turns ignorance to steam, but not anymore. This place is becoming more like Mournhold every day. Right. I'm sure you have plenty of work to do for Lord Fear. He's back a few days and already burying you in paperwork, no doubt. Take care of yourself, friend. Were you treated well by the menials? I assume they battered you with complaints. What have you learned? Yes, well, I could have told you that. That's why I sent you here, after all. What kinds of demands? Be specific. The lamps in the locutorium, yes? The large assembly room over there? The auxiliaries and factotums have been laboring in there day and night ever since we arrived. Curious. What could lights have to do with this? Well, there's only one way to find out. Impressive. I assumed I'd have to explain it to you. Of course, this requires a functional lamp. I assume he ordered them destroyed. Speak to that high elf of yours, Neramo. The dark elf as well. We need one of these lamps, repaired and operable. I hope to see you again, Assistant. Pray tell, what did Devaith Fear have to say? I fear that he and I might have gotten off to a poor start. Did he ask about me? Any mention of my many exploits? Raynor? 
Surely this is something I can handle myself. Impressing the Vaith fear could greatly increase my standing in the Dwemeric scholarly community. Tell me, what does Lord Fear ask of me? Uh, uh, us. He just wants us to build a lamp? What an odd request. No matter. I would be happy to offer my ample expertise, provided you let Devaith Fear know that I did so. First things first. I need to study one of the lamps we're supposed to recreate. Some kind of tubular housing, probably meant to protect a glass interior? Difficult to say. Hmm, some kind of compressor. For funneling a gas, perhaps? Interesting. Look at the apertures on this. It must be some kind of modulator that changes the nature of the light. Fascinating. A complex filament of some kind. The weaving on this fiber, it must be machine made. I should be taking notes. quality there.
compressors, filaments, housings, modulators. Yes! I think I understand what these discarded lights have in common. Unlike the other lamps, these compress some kind of geodic gas into metal tubes. Then modulate the light to create another kind of illumination that mortal eyes cannot see. Invisible light! Remarkable! The potential applications are... limitless! Yes, with Rayner's assistance, I believe we can recreate this lamp without much difficulty. Of course, you'll need to procure the requisite parts. These are all broken beyond repair. What do you plan to do with this light, exactly? You plan to do what? Oh dear. Well, this seems like a terrible idea, but I shall rely upon you and Lord Fear to protect me. Here's a list of the components I'll need. Once you've acquired them, meet me in the Hall of Refined Techniques. Good luck. Celebratory sweets. My house has been...
Now there's the look of someone on the hunt for something specific. You've come to the right place, friend. I've got a bit of everything. What can I get you? As a matter of fact, I acquired some of those just a few days ago. Apparently, someone's tossing out the old lighting to make way for the new. They're not easy to come by anymore, though. What's your offer? Varuni Arvel? Well, that changes everything. Any friend of Varuni's is a friend of mine. Why don't you take this tube on the house? Just let Varuni know how helpful I was, all right? And that I'm pretty good looking. Well spoken, too. Deal? you've returned. Excellent. Raynor and I have cobbled together a serviceable frame for the lamp. All we need now are the components I sent you to acquire. Were you successful? Wonderful. I'm confident this lamp will conform to the exact specifications of the lamps they removed, provided Raynor didn't make any miscalculations. So, would this be the time to inform Devaith Fear of our success? Or mine, specifically? Excellent, excellent! No need to return here, of course. Kirith should be back straight away, and I'll have her run the completed lamp over to the Locutorium as soon as it's ready. See you soon, assistant! Can't you see I'm busy?
Ah, I was beginning to worry. Not about you, of course. These apostles have been circling me like cliff racers. Looking for an autograph, no doubt. So tiresome. I take it you were successful in learning about these lights and constructing a new one? Well done. I assume you discovered the special property of these lamps. Why does my dear friend Seal go to such lengths to avoid them? Invisible light. Fascinating. To help with factotum navigation, perhaps? Huh. No matter. Further inquiry must wait. Now is the time for action. I will request a congressional assembly. Plant your lamp on the balcony above, then return to me. Did you say something about putting the lamp on the balcony? We might have a problem. Raynor and that annoying High Elf finished your lamp, but there's a problem. On the way here, I overheard an aide complaining about some new security measures Sotha Seal put in place. Looks like the balcony is under heavy guard now. Looks that way. Unless you want blood on your hands, of course. But that might complicate our sponsorship a smidge, yeah? Just be quick and quiet, like me. You'll be fine. Here's the lamp. Good luck. Walked out. Now the guards will haul you away. I convinced Sotha Seal that the Congress...
dead. Your mother wanted a better future for you. She believed it. Why can't you see? See what? That following the predictions of a deluded machine got my mother killed? I'll prove the prognosticator is a fraud. See if I don't. What is it? I convinced Sotha Seal that the Congress requires yet another lecture on the sanctity of clockwork automata. He eagerly agreed. Seemed almost giddy about it. It was unsettling. I convinced Good. Seal's lecture should begin any moment now. Stand ready to activate the lamp. I'm reasonably certain that something will happen, but the specifics elude me. I guess this is what uncertainty feels like. What a novel change of pace. We'll remind you yet again. My will of the fact to serve as an extension of my divine will. A cost them, and you will cost me. In the past, I have encouraged a child's curiosity and accepted minor blasphemies. But my generosity has limits. Know this. Any servant of the clockwork god with that totem shall be seen. What is that? What's happening? After him! Someone sees that and I haven't the time to discuss this, Faruni. Wittingly or unwittingly, Lord Sen well, no longer serves... That was enlightening. To think I've been speaking to Sotha Sil's shadow all this time. It seems so lifelike. Far more advanced than my own, I'm sorry to say. Oh, fascinating. It really is too bad we'll all be dead soon. Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but I will be frank. If an imposter sits upon the throne aligned and learns how to wield the power of this place, a cataclysm will follow. We may yet discover a way to avert this disaster, but the chances are slim. Stay with Varuni. With Sotha's seal exposed as an imposter, the Congress will fall into turmoil. In such chaos, dark truths always float to the surface. Pray they do so quickly. I have other inquiries to make. Stay vigilant. We will meet again soon. My dear Lord Set, what happened to you?
can scarcely believe what we just witnessed. How could this happen? How could a shadow masquerade as Lord Set? The father of mysteries would never let such a thing happen. There must be another explanation. Fear, of course. Always the iconoclast. I'll bet he's snickering at us even now. It doesn't matter. I... I appreciate your diligence. This has been a profoundly upsetting ordeal, but we must move forward. We must find the real Lord Set. Yes. He was acting strangely, wasn't he? He always chafed under Lord Set's rule. Now he finally has a pretext to seize control, and he slinks away like a broken brassilisk. Curious. Too curious. The real Lord Set will aid us eventually, I know it. In the meantime, we must do for ourselves. Thank you for everything you've done. It appears we'll have to do a lot more before this is through. Classic Gascon. Fleeing to his chambers when things go poorly. I'm sure that news of Lord Set's condition has already made it to the streets. We have to move quickly to prevent a panic. Try to talk to Gascon. He clearly doesn't care what I have to say, but he might listen to an exodromo. You remain, you know, a novelty. No offense. We can't assemble the Congress without the Chancellor. Check his rectory in the west wing of the Basilica. He hides in there sometimes to nurse a bruised ego or write passive-aggressive memoranda. I'll try to settle the Apostle's nerves. Honestly, my nerves could use some settling. Don't let Gascon wriggle out of this. He has a duty and an obligation. As do I. What? Yes. Yes, I'll be fine. I just... This makes no sense. I don't understand how a shadow could take Lord Set's place. Maybe this is some sort of test. But why test us? The clockwork apostles haven't strayed. We build and pray and experiment just as the holy texts dictate. Compromised? You make it sound as if Lord Set suffers some kind of defect, like a crimped duct or a stripped bolt or something. We're talking about a divine being. Gods can't be compromised. They exist without flaws. Right? Do you know what the sermons say? Complexity belies the truth. The world rests on simple principles. Set is the truth and the light. Understand the simple and you understand the obscure. I do appreciate your candor. Let's pick this up again later. Resident detected in proximity. Greetings. 